Hello and welcome to Science. Uh, today we're going to be having a look at artificial satellites and their uses, as well as some of the orbits that they're placed in. Artificial satellites are essentially robots that we've put into space um, that help us do jobs. Uh, so it might be that they take photos of the universe so that we can see things better. It might help that they, um, it might help with communications or spying or doing um, observation of the earth for scientific reasons. Because there are so many different uses to put a satellite in orbit, um, there are different sorts of orbits to help us with those things. Um, now, you'll remember from previous um, lessons that the speed of which a satellite is placed in orbit determines where, how far away from Earth it is. Um, so we're going to go through a few different types of orbit. So on the sheet here, you can see um, several different types of orbit. Um, apologies for the drawing. So we're going to start at the uh, top here. Um, this one here, LEO, which stands for Low Earth Orbit. And that one here, you can see it's going around the Earth here. Um, it's close to the Earth, so therefore it goes around the Earth pretty quickly. So this makes it very useful for traveling around the Earth's equator quickly, rapidly, and making sure that we have, it covers a lot of ground. However, because this is in line with the equator, it means that it can't cover the whole Earth. It can only see what's underneath it, and because it's quite close to the Earth. So whilst it makes it useful for imaging around the equator, um, it does mean that it's difficult to see all of the Earth. And that's where PEO comes in, which is the polar Earth orbit. So this goes up and over the poles of the Earth. Now, as the satellite goes up and over the poles of the Earth, remember the Earth itself is rotating. So over time, the satellite will pass over every single place on Earth. This makes it very useful if it's close to the Earth, uh, so in a low Earth orbit but uh, inclined over the poles, uh, for scanning the whole of the Earth. So you can imagine that it's good for uh, high resolution photos of the Earth, um, also spying because um, it will pass over the whole Earth eventually. It also means that it's, uh, it can be used to study what's going on at the polar ice cap. So these, uh, these are places that are difficult to get to by foot and directly measure. The next kind of orbit that we're going to have a look at is MEO, which is the medium Earth orbit. So rather like the low Earth orbit, again, it is around the equator, but it's a bit higher up. So it takes longer for it to go around the Earth. Now, depending on the use of it, it also means that it can see more of the Earth. So it can be used for communications. However, the specific kind of communication that you need to know about that it's used for is GPS, global positioning. Now, it would not make sense just to have a single satellite um, responsible for global positioning because whilst it's on this side, the hot, you wouldn't be able to use your sat-nav uh, or GPS on the other side of the Earth because you couldn't see the um, satellite. So we have what's called a constellation of satellites, which is basically just a group of satellites all in different orbits. So there's always going to be two or three that are able to be connected to your GPS. So you always have signal wherever you are in the world. The next kind of orbit that we're going to discuss is the GEO, the Geostationary Orbit. This one is a very specific kind of Earth orbit in the fact that the satellite, let's do it over here, the satellite um, takes 24 hours to go right around the Earth. So that means because the Earth takes 24 hours to spin round once a full day, this satellite will always be above that point on Earth, which makes it, and it will appear like it doesn't move in the sky. So geostationary orbit. Now it is moving pretty quickly, but 
because it's so far out, it appears that it goes around at exactly the same rate as the Earth. This makes it incredibly useful for communications because you've got a fixed point in the sky where it's always going to be. The last sort of orbit that we're going to discuss is this SSO, the Sun Synchronous Orbit. Um, this now, from the diagram, you can see that it looks very similar to the polar orbit, um, but it's further out. Now, what that means is that by carefully working how far this is away from Earth, rather like the geostationary orbit, you can link it to certain parts of the Earth's rotation. Now, it will never be appear like it's exactly fixed in the sky because the Earth rotates in that plane whilst the satellite is orbiting in that plane. But the clever thing about the sun synchronous orbit is the fact that it will pass over the same place on Earth at the same time every day. So these makes these ones incredibly useful for spying because you can look at the same thing every day at the same time and anything on its orbit will be there at the same point every day. Now, obviously, there are benefits and drawbacks to each of these different types of orbit for satellites, and there are different jobs that satellites need to do. So in your work pack, you should be able to use some of this information, uh, along with some research on the Internet, to try and finish your packs um, for this week. Thank you very much. Cheers.